Man was not a traveler in the first several million years he was on Earth. He wandered only to find food or escape disaster. But his wanderings were dictated by necessity and limited, closely limited, by the sea, the desert, a mountain, discomfort, and the difficulty of providing for his needs. Travel for pleasure? It didn't exist. Travel was hardship and trouble. Travel for pleasure? It was a long time in coming. This was the best an emperor could do a few hundred years ago. Later, this was considered elegant. 17th century, bring your own hammock. You'd rather not? All right, then travel on land. The road has just as many waves as the sea, but travel was improving. Vehicles were getting better and smarter. This one did away with the horse. Not entirely, you understand. The horse was still around. Just as sails were still around. Travel for pleasure was becoming a reality toward the end of the 19th century, in a way, that is, but not yet equaling man's soaring dreams. Conquest of the air. A balloon and two eagles in every garage. Well, the idea isn't entirely off base. J.P. Blanchard and Dr. Jeffries forgot the eagles and actually crossed the English Channel in this, the wonder of 1785. No stewardesses, you understand. Such things were to wait for many a day. How lucky we are. We don't have to wait. All these faltering steps are part of the past, along with the old Grecian galley, so that now it's not fancy, it's everyday fact when... Lufthansa German Airline... A rendezvous with Europe. You know, progress in air transportation has helped shrink this old world for all of us. We Americans have adopted Europe as our favorite vacation resort. We go there by the tens of thousands. Who? Rich people? Well, they're not excluded, but mostly it's the typical American. The average American family, such as the Athens. Now, there's Sam, head of the house and supermarket manager in his neighborhood. There's Jean, his wife, who sews most of her own clothes. Alice, who believes she's a career girl. Sandy, who's still playing with dolls, much to the disgust of Buzz, who's old enough to be in the Cub Scouts. Typical Americans. And they have a rendezvous with Europe. Me, rendezvous? Sure, I got a rendezvous with this supermarket. 7,200 a year plus bonus. Wife, three kids, taxes. <laughs> Me, rendezvous with Europe? Ah. Now eat it all up. Don't forget your milk. Here you are. Careful, dear, careful. Don't forget your milk. Well, yes, Jean does work in a school cafeteria, but as she says, it's more of a duty than a job. Only pays a little over a thousand for the ten months she works. Well, I felt it was my duty. With Buzz and Sandy in school 
and helped so hard to get. Kids are wonderful. Isn't it too bad life isn't as simple as Sandy thinks? I just don't understand how Daddy can spend all his time in that store with all the glamour here in the city. Nice friends, the theater, wonderful restaurants, all the shops and the new fashions. Really the latest. And I'm paying my own way now, too. Alice says she's paying her own way. Well, she does pay her own commutation. She buys her own sticky lunches. Even has enough over to buy her own nail polish. Hello, Mr. Allen. Oh, hello, Mrs. Thomas. How's Mr. Thomas? He's excited as a four-year-old kid. Oh? We're going to Europe. Oh, that's wonderful. When? We leave a week from Saturday. <laughs> well, happy landings, Mrs. Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Joe and Ginny Thomas going to Europe. Well, why not? After all, he's an engineer. Even my butcher's going. Look at me. Manager. Hmm. Well, that's the way it went. Every day or so, I heard about someone else going to Europe. Then one night at dinner... Sam, did you hear the Johnsons were going to Europe for a month? Well, I'm not surprised. Positively, everyone's going. No, but I heard that Joe Thomas and his wife are leaving the day after tomorrow. The Thomases? But what about us? Well, he's an engineer. He has a good job. So do you, Daddy. Yes, Sam. Remember when we were first married and you Yeah, were... yeah, I know all about that. But after all, this is Europe. Carl and his sister are going to Europe, and so is Stanley and Stevie and Barbara. Yeah, well, that's good. That's fine. We can have the whole place to ourselves or something. Oh, Sam. Really, Father? Oh, Sam, and really, Father, what? Well, it just seems to me that if your butcher can go for a month and take his wife and daughter, well, then... Well, he... even the boy in our mailroom's been to Europe. Even the boy in our mailroom. He can scoot all through Europe on a bike. It's awful pretty. I've seen pictures. I want to blow. So do I, Dad. It's out of the question. Now finish your milk. Well, that was how it began, and it just seemed to build. The list of friends, neighbors, and relatives on their way to Europe. It seems that everyone on the mailing list, and his kids, had a passport and a ticket. Aaron, Brown, Carlisle, Dana, Everson, Farmer, and on and on and on and on and on. Well, that's the way it started. And then it just seemed to build. Mabel Edinger was going to Europe, going again, mind you. And Frances Adams, and Ethel Morton, and Ruth Fisher, and Sylvia. Well, that's the way it started. And then it just seemed to build. Wherever I looked, whoever I spoke to, Europe seemed to come into everything. Everything we said, simply everything. Well? It was on everyone else's mind. Why shouldn't it be on mine? Everybody wanted to go to Europe, huh? Well, so did I. But after a hard day's work, home is where I really want to go. One evening, as I entered the living room, I noticed a subtle change in the decorating scheme. Subtle as a German tank, that is. Since when do we open the Allen Travel Agency? Oh, don't be silly, Sam. This isn't a travel agency. But Alice and I did stop down and see that nice Mr. Rogers who does have a travel agency. You know, his wife gave me that wonderful recipe for Never Bishop's Never mind Spread. about a recipe. What's all this nonsense about, oh, anyway? Daddy. Europe's not nonsense. It's a country, I think. No, a continent. See, Daddy, Buzz knows all about Europe. Oh, Daddy, isn't it wonderful? Just too beautiful. Ah. But somehow, after dinner that night, and boy, what a dinner Gene had fixed. Say, I wonder if that had anything to do with it. Ah, well, we got down to the nuts and bolts of our going to Europe, and I showed Gene that even with three salaries coming in, it was impossible. It's absolutely impossible. As I mentioned, Lufthansa has so many flights. We can pick one out right now if you want. Lufthansa? I don't know much about them. Oh, Sam, you don't know much about any of them, and you know it. You're only saying that because it's the truth. Is it a good airline, Jay? Oh, the best. Besides, Lufthansa has this travel dividends plan. 
A long list of cities you can visit at no extra charge when you fly Lufthansa to Germany, France, Great Britain, Italy, Switzerland, or any of the 12 other European and Near Eastern countries. That sounds great. Yeah, I'd like to go right now. Jean, all you have to do is call the school and tell them to keep the kids in for a month. Really, Sam, your own children. Uh, the authorities take a dim view of deserting kids, Sam. Besides, there are a few formalities. Getting the banks okay on your fly now and pay later loan, uh, your passports, your health shots, so that you can get back into the country after you leave. And... A group photographed with Sam, Jean, and the two younger children. Alice had to have her own, of course. Duplicate copies of the photos were made up. The State Department requires two. The Allens paraded to the passport office. Yes, paraded is the word. All Sam needed was a bass drum. But of course, all they really needed here were their birth certificates. They could have visited a clerk of the state court, but Sam insisted on this. A trip to the city, to the passport office itself. Looks like a lot of forms to work on. But no, there are some forms the Allens don't need. Filing for a passport is really rather simple. Odd as the children may be by the whole thing. What is the color of Sam's hair? Good thing Jean's along. Well, obviously she didn't say gray. Next, Sam wrote out his check for $10. That paid for the passport for all of them. All of them except Alice. Miss Independent wants her own. Let her be really independent, says Sam. Let her pay for it. Next up, the control desk. Applications, photographs, passport fee. Let's see, is that everything? Yes, that's everything. Oh, really, Sam? Your comb isn't needed. The oath of allegiance is solemnly administered. I do, says each in turn. Sandy, Alice, and Buzz are really putting their hearts and souls into it. And that's that. Almost a million passports are processed each year to meet the rising need as more and more Americans prepare for their rendezvous with Europe. That little book is a bestseller, Alice. It's nice to own your own copy. Really, Samuel Allen, you're setting a very bad example. Being vaccinated against smallpox just isn't that dreadful. And you'll all need a certificate of vaccination to get back into the country without being quarantined. That a boy, Sam. Just count five. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, that's all. Stout fella, Allen. An international certificate of vaccination is signed by the doctor for each one. Wearing his new vaccination like a red badge of courage, Sam pays another trip to Ted Rogers. Ted has the tickets all made out and is arranged for hotels and side trips. Sam wanted to make the most of his trip, wanted to know about things, and Ted obliged. Be an expert, Sam. Be an all-around expert. Learn something about the plane that will carry you to your rendezvous with Europe. Can this be me, Sam wonders? Little old never been away from home store keeping me. But Sam is the only one who's excited, you understand. Excited? Sam remembers that a European discovered America, but that's a mere dull fact compared to this American's discovery of Europe. Every spare moment is filled with maps and folders. Jean is burning with curiosity, too. And that's not all that's burning in the Allen kitchen. The day of departure draws near. Travel is the only thing anyone talks about. Talks, lectures. This is Expert Allen's evening extension course. Proceeding methodically with a prepared list, the Allens start packing. Well, that methodical business was too good to last. Now, the proper way to pack it... Oh, skip. Just 
don't forget anything. Be sure to pack soap. It's not furnished at all hotels. Got your money, Sam? Keys? Keys? I mean tickets. Let's hope so. At last, the airport at the Lufthansa counter. All packing and problems are left behind. Oh no, so were the tickets. Sam! Jean, we love you. Knew she had them all the time, eh, Sam? Sly old dog. Luggage is tagged and weighed. Knowing they will buy things in Europe, the Allens take only 200 pounds. The economy flight weight limit is 44 pounds apiece. They're 20 pounds under. First class weight limit is 66 pounds. Excess weight must be paid for. All set for Europe. Notice the luxury details the Allens are enjoying on the return trip? The way Sam figured, going to Europe economy class was fine, but world travelers like the Allens should have the best on the last leg of their flight back home. baggage by government customs office. Each person is allowed $500 worth of merchandise duty-free, regardless of age, after being out of the country two weeks or more. The exemption is automatically renewed every six months. Sam had Gene make out the customs declaration. He said he wouldn't inventory a darn thing until he got back to his store. Regardless of his age, a tourist can bring back a gallon of liquor duty-free. The most popular way is to import five fifth-quart bottles. The 
watch is passed, but what's this? Something very suspicious about this girl and her doll. Aha, what contraband is here? Sandy, a candy smuggler. What will he do? The verdict is waived. Not guilty. Sam will be a hero in Sandy's eyes, not even trembling. One bottle, Sam's brother thought he'd get a gallon. Sam still worked up about his hand-carved chessboard, 7,000 miles 12 days later. You'd think he was selling it. Ah, the crush-proof Borsellino hat from Italy. To Sam, it's as much of a plaything as the chess set. The man's seen him before. Let's get home. Hello, Mr. Rollins. Oh, hello, Mrs. Thomas. Well, I see you're back again. Been back for two weeks. And how did you like yours? Marvelous. I had a wonderful time. How about you? Delightful. It did my husband a world of good. What places did you visit? What places? We took the, 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 the grand tour. You see, our tickets for Rome had stopovers in. So we saw pretty nearly everything. We started with, let me see. We went to uh, Frankfurt, M Munich, Rome, Milan, Geneva, Zurich, Stuttgart, uh, Hanover, Hamburg, Dusseldorf, Cologne, Brussels, Paris, London, and Shannon. We saw 15 cities in all. 15? Yeah. Oh, I envy you. We only saw five. Uh, Hello, Mrs. Oh, Allen. Your husband's been telling me about your trip. It what was you... marvelous. Ted Rogers worked it out for us. He's traveling. Yeah, he's the one. Didn't that cost you a lot of money? Oh, a travel agent doesn't cost anything. He didn't? Oh. Really? Really? And it added a lot to our trip to have an expert help us with it. We owe him a big vote of thanks. I wish I'd known. But tell me, how did the children like it? I wouldn't have missed it. They ate it up. Alice has finally lived her dream. She's just the age for that. When we stepped off that plane back in the States, Alice threw her arms around me and said, Mother, I finally kept my rendezvous with Europe. <laughs> For Alice, well, if she never sees Europe again, it is hers. In the very special way that only a young lady can own something in her heart and her mind. Jean's rendezvous with Europe was a rendezvous with a dream, an appointment with a hope come true. She says it was one of those wonderful but rare common experiences that bind a family closer together. But what about Sam? What about Sam? If he has anything to say about it, then I think he does, the Allens will see Europe again. And there's no doubt about it, Sam was a little proud the day he stepped off the Lufthansa airliner and could add the name of Allen to the list of European travelers. Now Sam wonders, who has the next rendezvous with Europe? I hope he's right.